So I think I think we're good. Oh, look at that. Wow. Hey, I'm live. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Martin Wall. I'm a principal program manager in the Azure product engineering team. And uh, today we're going to talk about video artificial intelligence, which I hope you came to the right session to hear. Um, uh, at the show a year ago, we introduced a brand new product that allows you to upload videos into the Azure Cloud and then have the Azure Cloud perform automatic metadata extraction using all of the Microsoft Cognitive Services on your videos. So that product has now been available uh, for your testing globally for over a year. And at this show, uh, that service has just gone into a paid service. It's a paid Azure service now. So I wanted to give you sort of a quick demo walkthrough of what that is. So in case you haven't uh, had the opportunity to take a look at it, um, that's what we're going to show you. Just to, in case this is all news to you, in case you just happen to be sitting here because it's comfy seats, um, what we're talking about is giving you, as a developer, the ability to do functions against your video content that normally would have to be done manually by people. So that could be uh, auto transcription or transcription of video content or audio content. It could be to look for adult content in your videos. It could be to help build the video search engine so you could search for things in your video library, uh, whether those are faces or objects or words uh, or colors or emotions. Um, it could allow you to create the captioning. So you see the captioning that's up there. Um, you know, to make that available to you in terms of uh, your video content. Maybe you want to use it to build an application that helps you better understand what your viewers are watching. Like, when people watch your content, what do they like? When they tune away, what do they leave? What scenes, what people, what words, what emotions tend to be most popular amongst all your video content when compared to the viewership data that you may be collecting against your websites or your videos inside websites. So lots of ways to do this. When we introduced the Video Indexer product, we basically took a whole lot of Microsoft's Cognitive Services features, and then we built a whole platform on top of that by bundling them all together. So these are uh, examples of all the different features that are part of the Video Indexer that we have uh, had available to you in a preview state for the last year. And what we uh, expected was that video content owners and developers would now use the video indexer instead of calling all these Microsoft Cognitive Services one at a time. Because they all are available through Microsoft Cognitive Services, but we assumed that a lot of our developers would like to use them all in parallel. So I'm going to give you a little tour as to what the video indexer looks like. Um, let me switch my screen to make sure it duplicates. There we go. So um, there we go. The First thing to know is that this is available and has been available at video.ai. That's the website that this is. And it represents a way for you to visualize the use of metadata. Now, everything that I'm about to show you via this website is available through your developer APIs that we have in Azure. So there's a whole set of APIs that can automatically do everything that I'm about to show you, but they don't they don't visualize so well in a demo. So I wanted to show you kind of what this looks like. So I have uploaded a whole lot of different video types into my portal in my Azure account. And you can see these run the range, they get range from, uh, I, I put the keynotes that came up recently. I put some news broadcasts up, sports, all different kinds of videos to show you how different types of videos work. Let's take a look at one of these videos now. Uh, one that works really nicely and we're working a lot with is the news the news gathering industry. So uh, this is a, a broadcast from uh, Como TV here in Seattle. Uh, this is um, a local news uh, show that happened a couple of months ago. And what I want to show you is what kinds of metadata we're able to extract out of the out of this video. Right now, we begin with the latest in the bridge collapse. So the first thing I'm going to do is show morning, you uh, the captioning that has been created. Taken to the hospital. Uh, this captioning was auto-generated by our speech detect in uh, engine that pulls all the spoken words and, and brings them forward as a transcript, both in a transcript form, which is located uh, and visualized President in this section here, ABC's Maggie Rule as well as in captions that can appear on the screen. And I can download this transcript and use it completely 
separate from my video file, having done this process. Upload the video, create the speech-to-text transcript, download the transcript file, and go off. And many of our developers do exactly that. They only use this product just for that. But many of our other features are available to you as well. For example, uh, what if I want to, for example, do something like, um, uh, let me show you something like translation. Uh, as you know, Bing, Bing Translate Services has uh, about uh, 54, 55 different languages that are available to it. So um, my, my account connection just got, got reset. Let me just re restart my, uh, my browser here. Let's get it going again. This is what happens when I use demo Y, y uh, networking connection. Let's get back into my, there we go. So let's just say that this broadcast, which happens to be from a US station in English, but they want to reach viewers that are located in another language. Well, that's easy to do because uh, I can easily just go ahead and say, all right, let's take the captions that are in English and translate them to something else. Uh, let's say uh, there's a lot of Spanish speakers here in the US, so let's go ahead and send the entire transcript right into the, the translate the language in uh, engine, and now it's in Spanish. And you can see died. here the transcript is already available for me in Spanish. All of the words are now in Spanish. I could go ahead and republish this video to my website uh, or download the, the transcript in that language, and now I have it available. So that's one of the second most common use cases scenarios is transcription and translation. All right. Let's go ahead and take a no look at another example. More of the destruction, tons of concrete that came crashing down on cars and Now, one of the most commonly other ways that this product is used is in search. So, for example, let's say I'm looking for something specific inside my video content. I have a big video library. How could I look for things? Well, what if I want to look for videos that have, oh, Satya Nadella in them? Um, this is a famous person, and because of face detection that we have, as well as celebrity recognition APIs, I can automatically find a face in the video library that I've uploaded. As you can see here, it's given me four hits to places where Sacha appears in the video. But what if that's not enough? What if I also want to look for ways, places where Sacha is talking about, I don't know, like the cloud? Well, maybe I want to find specific times when he says certain words. Uh, not, just, not just that. So the ability to do complex searches, I want to find a face, I want to find a word, I want to find an object. This is giving you the ability to do true video search inside uh, your video content. So here's an example where there's a video, it contains Sachin Adela, it contains them talking about the cloud, and I can use this as a video search application. Now in this visualization, what you see is Sachin Adela appears many parts of this video, and I can even jump to all the next locations where Sacha's face appears inside the video. He appears here, and he appears here, and, and he appears all over the video. In fact, we're, we, we, even if you can read this little bit right here, you can see he appears at 20, almost 25% of the video. Now, where is this information coming from? Now, I'm giving you a visualization, but as I said, the power is the metadata that we've automatically created. So what does that look like? Well, what it looks like is this. This is the raw JSON output that we give you every time you upload a video into Azure and run this process. So if you want, of course, you can look at it inside some sort of visual editor like this, right? And that breaks down into all of these different categories of ways that you can see faces, all the faces that appear, how many faces there are. We have keywords. We have sentiment analysis of emotion. We have audio sound effects, like this one is speech. This one might be where is their clapping, where are their sirens, where is their silence, right? So the power here is not just in the visualization that I was showing you, but rather in this metadata. And as you can see quite plainly, there is a lot of metadata. And all of this metadata is your ability to use it however you like in all of this video content. So whether you're going to use it for the faces that are here or keywords like here, take me to the part of the video where they're talking about where the bridge, so the bridge is going to collapse or where um, maybe I'm looking for something spe specific in an area that we call labels. Uh, you'll notice in here these are objects and actions. So for example, uh, oh, if I look right here, there might be an airplane. Take me to the first occurrence or the next occurrence of where there is an airplane taking off because I'm looking for an object inside my video. Uh, or it might be a color. 
So here's my airplane. The ability to search deeply inside your video or audio content, and I shouldn't exclude audio content, is precisely the power that we're giving you by giving you the ability to run this indexing process through your media content. Now, sometimes words are special. If you look in this case here, there are some words that we've identified as brands. Those are product names, service names, trademark names, company names that appear in your video. So again, what we're trying to do is find all this metadata for you easy and give you those links to be able to access that content. And in the metadata, we have not just the name of the object that we found, but the time code so that you can jump. So here, where there's a reference to, say, Wells Fargo, where they're talking about something to do with the bank Wells known as Wells Fargo, it pulls Wells Fargo from the video and takes it to the part where Wells Fargo is referenced. Whether that is being spoken aloud in the words, or whether it's an object that's written to the screen. And the more data that you build up inside your Azure account that makes it searchable, the more powerful this gets. So if I do want to do look for specific words, or if I want to find a cup of coffee, uh, if I know how to spell coffee correctly, or if I want to find a cup of coffee, but a cup of coffee held by a particular actor, like one of my favorites from Mr. Robot here. So there is a link between an object, which is a cup of coffee, being held by a person in the same frame, and you can see that I can jump right to that part in the video. So again, these are the kinds of use case scenarios that we are giving you. Now, how do you as a developer take advantage of this technology? Well, that's where we have built for you an entire developer portal. So as I mentioned to you, everything that I've been showing you, I've been clicking myself, but all of that has an API associated with it. So the ability, for example, to upload a video into your Azure account, we have an API that you can call to do that. The ability for you to run the index and to pull and do searches, we have an API for that. If you want to do all kinds of more advanced work, and if you've been listening to what's at the conference in terms of custom work that's available, you can customize language models, you can customize the faces that we recognize, you can customize the brands that we're looking for. All of that is possible through the series of APIs that we had available uh, for you be, to be able to use. So these P powerful capabilities are what we are presenting to you via this brand new product that we refer to as Video Indexer. Now, this was a very quick and dirty look at the product. I'm doing another session that's much longer on this at 4.30 over at the Sheraton. And I certainly would invite you to come and, and see what we're doing uh, from that perspective, because we're going to walk through um, what else we're doing in Video Indexer, as well as all the different media services APIs that this falls into. There's a whole other category of capabilities that we have at Azure around the management and distribution of video and audio content. So if you're interested in that, come stop by. Uh, are there any questions that I can answer for you? And we have one of our developers joining us from the ILDC uh, ECOS here. And uh, he is uh, on the team that helped to support our API catalog. So he is available also to answer any dev questions that you might have. Any questions? And I'll repeat them. Yeah. Yeah, so on the uh, place where the videos are all stored, they're, they're basically in Azure. They're, yes. The question is, where are the videos being stored? They're being stored in your Azure storage account. So uh, whereas when we launched the product initially, we've had this as a demo state and it's been sort of in a, in, in a private account that we manage for you. As of Monday, that changed. Now you link your Azure subscription and your own Azure storage account, and you run the indexing process through the videos that you have in your Azure storage account. Yes? So will this only work with video streams, or could it be used as a series of snapshots? Uh, he's asking whether this can be used for video only, or a? A series of snapshots. So, so this product is not an image, is not an image uh, product. This is for video, although it can be used for audio as well. Yes. Um, great question. Yeah. Uh, the output files, or the, like the BTT files and the transcripts, are those put back in the same storage account? Or do you specify it? You can. Yeah, the question is, what happens to the output? Uh, yeah, so you can either download the video, uh, download the JSON insights or the VTT transcript files, and you store them in Azure, your storage account, if you want. You can take them off the, off the cloud if you want. But that's where they're going to, they can be stored. Absolutely. Yeah. And this doesn't get shared. This is, this is all part of your own storage account. So if you want to make it available to somebody else, like publish it, then you have to make that action to make it publishable. Yeah. Is it available for live streaming? Great question. 
Um, live streaming is the next thing we're tackling on our roadmap. So the ability for you to not just take a recorded video that's done, but a continuous stream of video and perform this analysis as we get it. And in fact, if you are familiar with Azure Logic Apps, you can already do a part of this today. A Logic App that takes in a live stream and does a function that we call subclipping to create a smaller little file out of the, and then we take that little file and we analyze that file and then we take the next little file and we do that in a continuous loop. And we have customers and developers already doing that while we work on the formal version of the live stream support. So um, yeah, that's kind of what we're tackling next. Are there codec restrictions? Great question. So when you upload your video files, uh, they have to comply with any video file that we support in media services within Azure. And uh, there's an entire web page dedicated to the list of codecs that we support. It's a long list. Uh, if you look for azure.com forward slash media, inside there is documentation. And you can just say what it, you just look for encoding. It gives a long list. But this product is, complies and does the same video types and codecs that our media services and uh, portfolio supports. Great question. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Audio pr uh, language detection, is that what you mean? No. At the, so the question is, if you send us a multi-language audio file with multi-tracks, uh, are, you, are you able to detect it and then possibly, I assume, analyze each one? of those. Yeah, so that, that is not something we're doing right now, is you send us like English and Spanish and French and this, or stereo, or, or left and right, or 5.1 Dolby or 7.1. No, we're only kind of looking at uh, one at a time right now, but that is something that we're trying to figure out how our customers want us to work with content like that. So, yeah. Yeah, so the gentleman's asking at the, if you remember in Sacha's keynote uh, on the first day, there was the drone demo and the video was coming in and detection was happening and all, all, all that. So in a way, that is part of where all of us work sort of come together, right? Because the video stream is coming in. Uh, in this case, however, the drone has an FG, FPGA that's doing some analysis on it itself, the cameras itself. And then some of that data is being reanalyzed in the cloud. So a lot of this technology that we're talking about is a combination of that. The one that I'm showing you today, the Video Indexer product, is a cloud-only product. It only exists right now within the Azure public cloud or, or, or the main data. It's not running an Azure stack or an FPGA. But the cognitive capabilities that you're referring to are very similar. And we are, as a company, sharing a lot of these technologies to do scenarios like what you're talking about. So give us some time. and. Yeah, you'll start seeing more and more stuff like this. Yeah, great question. I think we're out of time, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so thank you all very much. Drop by at 4.30.